Welcome back guys, in today's video we're going to be looking into the nervous system including its function and structure as well as what happens in a voluntary and reflex response and finally we're going to talk about synapses so let's get into it so let's first talk about the function of the nervous system and its structure the nervous system allows humans to react to their surroundings and coordinate their behavior this basically means sensing changes in the environment and reacting to those changes the structure of the nervous system consists of a huge network of nerves that span the entire human body. The job of the nerves is to send information around the body in the form of electrical impulses. These nerves are made out of a bundle of cells known as neurons, which are specialized cells adapted to carry these electrical impulses. Neurons have a long and branched structure and are connected to each other to form a path for the electrical impulses to travel through. You can think of them as long wires around the body with current flowing through them. The main part of the nervous system is known as the CNS, which stands for the Central Nervous System, and it's made out of the brain and the spinal cord. It basically receives information from different parts of the body and makes decisions on what to do and sends information back out. The whole process of a nervous response starts with a stimulus. A stimulus is a change in the environment that we can sense. This could be temperature, light levels, sound levels, pressure when touching objects, and chemicals from smelling and tasting. Receptors are cells that detect a stimulus and are mainly found in sense organs. For example, temperature receptors that detect changes in temperature of the surroundings are found in the skin. Light receptors in the eye, sound in the ears, pressure receptors in the skin, and chemical receptors in the tongue and nose. So the receptor is the thing that senses a change in the environment. But what actually responds to the change is known as an effector. This is always at the end of a nervous response and can either be a muscle that contracts or a gland that produces a hormone. Now the CNS, the receptors and the effectors are all connected together by neurons and you can have three different types of neurons. The first is a sensory neuron which connects the receptor to the CNS so it basically sends information from what's being sensed in the surroundings. The second is the motor neuron which connects the CNS to the effector and is where information on how you respond to a stimulus is sent. And the third is a relay neuron which connects the sensory neuron directly to the motor neuron. These are only found in reflex responses, which we'll talk about later. First, let's talk about voluntary responses. This is one that involves the conscious part of the brain, meaning the person is aware of the decision to make and the decision is controlled by the brain. For example, imagine a person walking outside and suddenly a drop of rain lands on their arm. The stimulus in this example would be the pressure of the raindrop landing on the skin. This stimulus is detected by the pressure receptors in the skin which send an electrical impulse through the sensory neuron to the central nervous system. This impulse goes up the spinal cord to the brain which processes the information. In other words, this is when you realize it's raining. The brain then makes a decision to open an umbrella and sends the information back down the spinal cord to the motor neuron. The motor neuron then takes this electrical impulse to the relevant effector, which in this case is the muscle in your arms. These muscles create a response by contracting and opening the umbrella. The second type of response you can have is a reflex response. These are automatic and rapid when compared to a voluntary response. This is because they don't involve the conscious part of the brain, so time isn't taken processing the information and deciding how to respond. They're useful because they can prevent your body from harm by responding to something much faster. An example of this would be if you were to touch something very hot and your hand was to withdraw. A fast automatic response is useful here because a normal voluntary response would take longer and that would mean your hand being on the hot object for longer and possibly burning you more. This all happens quickly because the route that the electrical impulses take is different. This route is known as the reflex arc. The stimulus in this example is the temperature of the hot object. The receptors this time are the temperature receptors found in the skin. This sends an electrical impulse through the sensory neuron and when they reach the CNS, instead of going up to the brain, they travel through a relay neuron which is found in the spinal cord. These act as a coordinator and directly send an impulse back via the motor neuron. This then goes to the muscles in the arm which contract to respond and move the hand away from the hot object. The final thing we can talk about is a synapse. This is basically a gap between different neurons. Just like normal electrical current in a circuit, electrical impulses can't flow through gaps. So what happens is when the impulse reaches the end of a neuron, it triggers a chemical known as neurotransmitters to diffuse across the gap to the next neuron. 
Once they reach the other side, they trigger another electrical impulse to allow it to continue down the path and carry on sending the message. And that's it for that topic guys. If you like this video and want to see more, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.